So one of the big things in set theory is that Zemelu believed in, but Frankel didn't, and actually most mathematicians do not believe in, or do not like, is that Zemelu believed in the choice function. He believes that the, there exists a choice function, the axiom of choice. That was in his original axioms. And actually, that's probably one of the reasons why Zemelu could not prove consistency. See, Gödel and Cohen, uh, Cohen, he's a mathematician here who passed away recently. Oh, damn. Yeah, he's a mathematician here who passed away different, uh, recently. And Kurt Gödel, they came up with this idea. They, they proved together, well, not together, but each one proved different half of this same coin that zermelo frankel axioms are independent of the continuum hypothesis and also they're independent the zermelo frankel axioms are also independent of axiom of choice it's axiom of choice has many weird equivalences i would say for example it has the equivalence of the well-ordering hypothesis principle. Every set can be well-ordered. And for example, it has Zohn's lemma. That's a big one. Every partition has a set of representatives. That's a big equivalence you have to prove. So it's, many things come up from the uh, axiom of choice. Many of our big theorems, they rely on the axiom of choice, but not many mathematicians believe that it should be taken as axiom because it's not intuitive. It's not. It's not something that you believe off the bat. So many, some, so in set theory, they're trying to replace axiom choice or find something a better candidate for an axiom. Or, well, it's some people they say, you know, it's not going to contradict Zermelo Frankel, so might as well accept the axiom of choice. I don't know. Me personally, I don't. I don't have an opinion because I'm not that good. Yet. But set theory is actually what I'm doing my honors thesis on, a descriptive set theory, which combines analysis and set theory. Oh, set theory also do interesting things. For example, we cover countability. We cover cardinality. So we look in a room in a movie theater, and we want to say that all this that all that this movie theater is full. All we need to say is that there's a one, that every seat has a person in it. There's a one-to-one -one mapping between seats and people. So th that's an idea between cardinality, is that there exists, when you say two sets have the same cardinality, if there exists a one-to-one -one mapping onto, from one set onto another. So for example, the real numbers are uncountable and there is no one-to-one -one mapping from the natural numbers to the real numbers. And also, we can say there's no one-to-one -one map. We can say, however, there's some interesting ideas, interesting cardinalities you can show. We can show that the, something's uh, an infinite set. Uh, the natural numbers is isomorphic. Is No, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between na natural numbers and n cross n. So this means, or for example, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between r and r2, r4, r5. So that's pretty crazy. It's a very unintuitive set theory. So set theory, I was talking about before, we can build the natural numbers. How do we build the natural numbers? We start off with the empty set zero. The empty set. We call that zero. Then we take the empty set, union the set with the empty set in it. We call that one. Then we take the union of the empty set uh, uh, of zero and one. Then we take the union. Then two is actually the union of uh, of uh, yes. Yeah, two is the union of zero one. Three is the union of zero one and two. Or actually, it's actually good. To see. It's gonna be union of. Let me start. It's gonna be the, one's gonna be union of zero, and the set with zero. One is gonna be union. Of zero with a set of zero. Two is going to be union of one with a set of one. Ah, let me write this. We define a successor as equal the union 
the successor s plus one equals union of set union to set form from s. And we do this recursively to actually derive the natural numbers. And from this, we create something called the axiom of induction, which relies on the natural number. OK. Axiom of induction says an inductive set always exists. And we actually prove that the natural numbers is actually the smallest inductive set. It actually contains all other, in, well, not contains, it's contained in all other inductive sets, which is interesting. So from the natural numbers, we so we can go even further, and we can go into the transfinite induction, transfinite uh, numbers. So in high, so probably in elementary school, you probably had an argument with a little with like a little friend, and he said, "I'm better than you plus one. Or, I'm better than you to the. I'm better than you. I'm better than you to the one millionth power. I'm better than you to the infinity. You can actually go beyond infinity." In both cardinality and ordinality, in, in, or, and there's ordinals, ordinal numbers beyond infinity. For example, but some of them are also the same cardinality as, in, as infinity. For example, omega we call is is the set of all natural numbers. Now we can actually define omega plus one as equal to omega uh, union the set of omega. And we can actually do this inductively. We can actually define things, for example, all functions, all functions with natural numbers to natural numbers, omega to an omega, which is actually greater, uh, which is actually, there's actually more functions from, the cardinality of this guy is actually greater than infinity. This actually, you can say things, for example, natural real numbers. There are, there's more real numbers than natural numbers. You can say things like that. You can say, uh, let's see. You can take things, for example, omega to the omega to the omega. So you can have things, for example, we define things like L. We define elements. We define. You can have things that say. We have things that are countable, countably infinite. Then we have things that are uncountably infinite. And there's more uncountable. There's more real numbers than natural numbers. We can have things that are uncountably, uncountably infinite. And then uncountably, uncountably, uncountably infinite. And keep on going. So it's interesting. You should look up the cardinality, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. They're an interesting topic. Actually, set theory was my first A plus at this school. So I'm very happy about this. And I'll be working with Professor Pfefferman this summer in descriptive set theory. So th that was one. It's very unintuitive subject, but I love it very much. So that is set theory. I recommend Harbeck and Jack, Introduction to Set Theory. Very good. I like it. So that's, so, so far we talked about algebra, analysis, and uh, set theory. And let's just, uh, logic goes in the category set theory. Some people say set theory is an extension of logic. I, I don't think so. But it's, it's logical thinking, I would say. So logic is a very important topic. I should stop here.